Right, good morning everybody and welcome to the, I think it's the 17th, I could be wrong, um, ukulele warm up on a Tuesday and um, welcome to people on YouTube as well and if the YouTube people would like the, um, the notes for this at any point just let me know, leave a message underneath. Um, so we're going to be looking at uh, uh, just the last bit of the seventh chords today. I don't want to do too much theory uh, at a particular time of the year like this. So we're just going to finish off the, some of the seventh chords we were um, talking about last time and, all, and then do a little bit of strumming just to uh, finish off the, the half hour. Um, good, good, good. Right, let's just, um, just get our hands moving first of all. We just need to... Actually, just shaking the hand, the right hand especially, just to get that moving and limbered up a little bit. And with the left hand, left hand's got all those um, chord shapes to make. So if you wiggle your fingers, that will certainly help the blood into the fingers. Um, the muscles for your hands, of course, are up your arm somewhere, not in your fingers, but it does help the joints a little bit. And uh, they even say uh, just holding a nice hot cup of coffee can help um, when warming up the, the fingers. So if you've got one of those, grab your coffee and let the heat seep into your fingers. So just like doing athletics, it's always a good idea to warm up a little bit before you uh, embark on playing. So let's just play some um, simple chords to start with, um, chords that everybody knows. And we'll just start strumming gently on um, C and then I'll just shout out a chord or two and we'll change. So it's really just to get our ears and hands and ear, um, fingers moving. So just start strumming on the C, one, two, three, follow me. After four, I'm going to go to F. One, two, three, four. Back to C after four. One, two, three, C. Now after G, two. the next one just so uh, wait for the count e7 one two three four back to a minor one two three four good good right we're gonna change key up to d after four one two three d is going to be the next one, so get ready for that. A7234. And back to D1234. We're going to try a bit of a trickier one now, just to keep going. So F is the next key. So after 4F, 1, 2, 3, Now the next chord is B flat. And that is 3, 2, 1, 1. So if you can figure out 3, 2, 1, 1, I'll give you a few seconds. B flat's coming up. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's good, I can see some B flats there. 
Back to F. One, two, three, four. Up to C7, two, three, four. I'm just going to hold the chord now, just one long chord. You don't want to finish there, do you? Hit the F. And resolve your C7 to F. Good, a little wander there through a few. Um, chords. Okay, let me get on the screen now um, those chords that I sent in the email. We're not going to spend an awful long time doing this because it's stuff you can work on uh, in your own time um, and lots of us have got more spare time now than ever before. So um, this is really just carrying on from where we left off talking about uh, seventh chords a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I just wanted to um, show you the chords in the key of G uh, which have sevenths after them, or sevens. So um, they're shown across the screen there, G major seven, A minor seven, B minor seven. These chords don't come up very often. Um, they do tend to come up in sort of old style songs by people like Cole Porter and Jerome Kern and Gershwin and some of the old jazz standards as well. And, and also some of the um, uh, George Formby songs as well will have these sort of chords in. So they're, they're worth kind of knowing, but you won't be playing them every day. It's certainly not in the group situation. So, uh, but let's just go through them one at a time. So we're going to start with G major seven. So we all know G. We've just been playing that, but um, which is naught two three two, but G major seven is naught two two two. So that means you just put one finger across the second fret, and you get a kind of a, a subtle version of the same chord. Okay, we're just going to spend a few seconds on each one, so not too long. A minor 7, oh, well, that's nice and easy. Uh, that's all the open strings. Yeah, that's the correct version of that. B minor 7, the third chord. And you notice there's a Roman numeral 3 above it, which is why I say it's the third chord. You do need your Roman numerals for music, so if you're not sure about the numbering system of the Romans, uh, look that up, but here we go. B minor seven then is one finger across the second fret. Yeah, and it's not a coincidence that A minor seven is looks very similar, but two frets lower. It's because it's two semitones lower. Okay, so that's B minor seven, one finger across the top, the second fret. C major seven. Now we all know C major, which is not 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 three. So C major 7, there's kind of another variant on that. So it's just, And use your second finger for that. So if you use your third finger for C, regular C, use your second finger for C major 7. You get that nice sound. Okay, uh, moving on to D7. Um, a couple of versions here we mentioned last time. Um, 2, 2, 2, 3 which is a bar across the second fret, a bit like B minor seven, really. And then the second finger, try using second finger, not third. Second finger on the third fret, you get D7. Now that's the textbook version of it. Um, but you can play what I've shown below, two naught, two naught, which will do, which will be absolutely fine. It's a, a different, what they call a different voicing of D7. Uh, interestingly, it doesn't actually have the note D in it, the 2 naught 2 naught, which is why some people think, well, that's not a true D7, but it's, it's good enough. It sounds fine. That's D7. Um, let's go on to the sixth chord now. Uh, the relative minor of G is E minor. So we've got naught 2 naught 2 which actually is easier to play than the normal E minor, isn't it? Naught two, naught two. Yeah, you recognize that chord? The first chord of um, that Beatles song, uh, Fall on a Hill. I think they call it something else, but it's that. Uh, and then um, F sharp minor seven flat five, which um, show me a song with that chord in it and <laughs> we'll spend some time on it, but leave that one for now. Uh, unless you want to investigate that one further. Uh, but it very rarely comes up. So, um, okay, they're the main uh, seventh chords in the key of G. 
So all we're going to do now, and um, you'll have these chords sent to you, so you can always practice them later. Is just to let's just do a little bit of strumming of a um, a chord sequence using those chords. I've already hidden the actual <laughs> chord shapes by doing this. Uh, should have squashed them closer together. Let's see if I can um, zoom in a bit or zoom out a bit, in fact, because I want the chords on the screen at the same time as the things at the top. Uh, I won't be able to do this for each sequence. Oh, there we go. We have got it. That's, uh, can you all see that still? So we've got the, the chords that we're going to strum. A minor 7, D7, and G major 7. And G major 7 again. Using those chords at the top. We're going to do it very slowly. And we're just going to... Just to get going, we're just going to uh, do single strums. So let's just go through those slowly. A minor seven, which is naught, 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 naught. Just do four on there, four strums. Now D seven, whichever one you want. Two naught, two naught. Then G major seven, naught, two, two, two. Now doesn't that sound pretty? And I'm doing another four there. Back to the beginning. Open all the open A minor seven. Now D seven. And G major seven. One more time, A minor seven. and G major 7 and another four strums of that okay let's uh, let's just give that a little bit of a rhythm now so I'm just gonna still go fairly slowly but I'm gonna just give it a normal strumming pattern um, that sort of speed. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So it's one bar of each chord. Uh, sorry. Well, there's what two bars of the G major, but uh, one bar of the A minor and the D at that tempo. So I'm going to count you in, and we'll start with the A minor seven, and just go around those four chords. One, two, three, four. D seven and G major seven. A minor seven, D seven, and G major. Now that's um, if you haven't played those before, you, there's a lot to take in. You're learning new chords and changing between them. So I'm just going to do that a little bit, um, not slower, but you have two bars per chord. Just a bit more time to think about each chord. So two bars of each chord. One, two, three, four. Another bar. Now D7 and G major 7. And G major 7 again. Back to the beginning. A minor 7. One more time, back to the A minor 7. D7. And we'll finish on that chord there. Okay, that was in the key of G, so that's why I finished on the G chord. Uh, and that's the way to find out a key of a song is to look at the last chord, not the first chord. Okay, let's just we've got just one more chord sequence in this uh, particular part of the session um, using those chords. As I said, I can't get those all on the screen at the same time. I didn't plan that ahead, did I? 
Uh, again, let me um, just zoom out. That might help. I don't want to lose the visibility though. Oh, there we go. Right, good. So we've got the chords at the top. We're doing the second sequence now. G major 7, E minor 7, C major 7, D7. So we already know G major 7, so let's do that. Three, four, just four strums. E minor 7, naught 2, naught 2. Quite a similar sound. C major 7, naught, naught, naught 2. And D7. Probably notice there's an awful lot happening on the open strings and the second fret with this key. <laughs> uh, that's D7. Finish on the G major 7. Okay, we're going to just uh, play through that slowly then. Four strums for each chord. One, two, three, four. E minor 7. C major 7. And again. D7. Let's do that one more time. on the G major 7. There we go. If you arpeggiate these chords they sound very nice as well. Okay, well, we'll leave those chords there then, and as we're halfway through the session, and um, you know, if, if if that's something that interests you, or you've seen songs with those chords in, then that's something to perhaps explore and uh, spend a bit more time on, um, and because they do, uh, they do sound lovely. Those chords, they don't suit all sorts of music, but um, they're they're nice chords to use. Right, we're going to uh, go right back to the beginning of the session, and we are now going to do a little bit of jingle bells. Yes why not well it's that time of the year isn't it and uh, doesn't mean it's going to be easy <laughs> uh, okay we're going to um, strum through jingle bells uh, but we're going to do it in three different keys so have I got the right tempo yes I'm going to put the metronome on for this one we're only doing the chorus of jingle bells and which is the bit that goes jingle bells jingle bells jingle all the way oh what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh so I haven't put those lyrics on the screen. You can sing along with yourself if you like. Um, I might sing along, I'm not sure. I might be concentrating too hard. Um, but they're the chords. Uh, one bar of each. So each, um, so four bars of C to start with. That's when you're singing the Jingle Bells bit. And um, I've written above it, this is for those of you interested in these things, the number of that chord in the sequence, in that key. So in the key of C, C is obviously the one chord. These are Roman numerals again. In the key of F, it's the fourth chord, C, D, E, F, one, two, three, four, and so on. And um, it's a, you, can, you can memorize songs by actually remembering the number system because then it enables you to easily change key and they start to become familiar after a while. So the beginning of Jingle Bells is a one, four, one, two, five. And the second line is a one, four, one, five, one, which is... Similar but different. Anyway, everybody else, you just strum along. Let's. Uh, uh, the first note when you're singing, if you're a singer, you probably hit the first note anyway. But the um, the first note is the third of the chord, which is an E. So if you found an E on your instrument, G C E, just pluck the E string. Jingle bells. That means the song starts on that song uh, note. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Yeah, that's how you find the note of jingle bells. It's the third in the scale. Right, we're just going to play it. Let's just play it. Do I need the metronome on? Yes, I think I will. 
Jingle bells. Probably can hear that. Here we go. We're just going to go straight in. One, two, one, two, three, four. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Up to the F. Dun, dun, dun. C. D7. G7. Next line. Okay, we'll stay on the C, on the one chord. Because we're in the key of C. And we'll do it again. One, two, a one, two, three. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way up to the F. Time a one, two, a one, two, three, four. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. F. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse Jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Let's do that last line again. No, from the F. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse. From the F again, two, three. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a... Stay on the G7. We go one horse, open C, So you can play fast and loose with the ending there and give it something a bit different. But they usually, they quite often repeat endings um, a bit like that, where they just repeat the last line. That's known as a tag ending. So if someone shouts out, tag ending, um, at the end of a song, that's what you've got to do. You repeat the last bit. Which last bit? Well, that depends on the arrangement you're currently playing. But, uh, okay. Um, I did say we're going to play this in different keys. So let's move to the key of, you can probably guess, G. Okay, here are the chords in the key of G. Um, clearly it starts on G, so it's going to be at a different pitch. Um, but you'll notice that the numbering system, the numbers have stayed the same because in the key of G, G is now the one chord, whereas C was before, um, so it's still a one four one two five. No, on the next line one four one five one. Uh, but we're starting on a different starting point, so all the notes have moved up or down. This is a way of changing the key of a song. It's just to number them in the original key, and then decide where you want to move, what key you want to move to. Keep the numbers the same, and work out the new chords. Um, and the other thing is, I did say that the melody starts on a on the third of the key. Now we're in the key of G, so I can't hear any of you, and I'm not expecting you to unmute yourself and tell me the answer, but the third of G is going to be B. Yes, it's going to be B. It is B. G, A, B. One, two, three. Uh, it's a major third. Um, so we find a B on our G chords, um, there's one there, on the A string, the second fret is a B, so that means it starts up there, it's a bit high isn't it, jingle bells up, or about jingle bells, that's better, this is not the right key for me, jingle bells, <laughs> Um, but that's you know that's what happens when you change key you change the pitch of the song which is why we change keys in the first place to make them suit the singer okay let's go straight in and play jingle bells in the key of G uh, we'll have a bit of a strum on G before we start and I'll count you in so off we go with the G one two oops. one two three four right just G 
when I start singing that's the top. Two, three, four. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. C. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. C. Oh, what fun it D7. Idea. So you can see what's going on when you change key. Um, let's do that again. One, two, three, four. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. C. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Do one more of these choruses and there'll be a tag ending to get ready for that. That means doing the last four bars um, twice extra and also extending the D7. Here we go from the top one, two, three. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. See, oh, what fun it is. again. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. From the C here last time. Oh, what fun it is to ride. Hold the D. One horse open. G. Yes, tag endings. Oh, I also added a little G, D, G. If you want that little thing on the end of your songs, just go to the five chord. One, five, one. That's a common little thing to add to the end of a bit of strumming as well. It's just a crowbar in the five chord quickly back to the beginning. Right, one more key. Um, we've only got a couple of minutes to go. So let's do uh, the key of D. Yeah, these are all still chords, you know. Um, we're not going to do C sharp major today, so we should be okay. Um, okay, same number and system, but we're starting on D this time. And um, think to yourself, what's the third of D, the starting note? Well, in the scale of D, it goes D, E, F sharp is the third in the scale of D. So we find an F sharp on our ukuleles. Where's that? Well, yeah, it's on the second fret of the um, E string. Jingle bells, so we're starting there. Jingle bells, and play a D chord. I know a lot of you, if you're good singers, you can pick out the note just by strumming the chord, but uh, it's good to identify it as well. That's known as a bell note. You're learning all this terminology today. Um, a bell note is when the piano player at the beginning of a song gives the singer their first note. Can I have a bell note? There we go. So that's the uh, opening note of the uh, chord, uh, the, the song. Jingle bells. So let's just strum it. Here we go. Three times round. So it's three times. Um, and tag ending. Uh, extended A7. D at the end. With a little A7 thrown in. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, let's just strum first. One, two, three, four. Now singing. One, two, three. Yeah, 
not my key. <laughs> okay, last time. One, two, three. Jingle. Tang ending. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. From the G. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one And again, but with a long A7. Da, 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 da. done so much singing in public right folks that's it let me get off the screen i think that's um that's our warm-up for the day and uh, that's our warm-up for the year um let's get that off there and um as i said earlier we will i will be back in uh, two weeks time christmas and new year don't get in the way we'll just carry on and so it's, it's lovely to see so many of you coming out and i hope you can come back in a couple of weeks time and we'll carry on not where we left off just somewhere else but we'll be playing lots of uh warming up type music and um if anyone uh d does uh, have any ideas of things they would like to, me to include i mean i'm quite i'll certainly consider it whether i will or not is another thing but i'll certainly consider any ideas that people have of things that they'd like to hear or see in the um the warm-ups more of this less of that whatever you like so just say what you like i uh, just reply to one of the emails that i send out and um and then i'll i'll pick that up so uh, okay if you'd like to uh, unmute yourselves and um you're welcome to say goodbye and happy christmas to everyone Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Have a lovely Christmas, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Dave.